kind of spin the boat a little bit see so you can tell where I'm at the narrows starts right over there and I'm up here on the shallow side setting the boat about three two to two and a half three foot deep over here and then fishing out towards the middle been up here oh for about an hour and a half and uh, they're really starting to bite a little better now uh, it's about five o'clock in the evening and uh, a little breeze out of the west so it's blowing over my shoulder out that way I've got a, uh, a mink scud it's a brown scud under a real tiny indicator about three and a half feet deep 6x fluorocarbon tippet and uh, the scud is a number 14 it's tied on a number 14 200R which is kind of a long hook so it's a pretty good sized fly and what I'm trying to do is keep the boat where to where I'm throwing out it's about three to four foot deep so I kind of kind of keep an eye on how how fast it's dropping out out there and there's been a chop on the water for the most part which is great but when it gets dead still they're still hitting it fairly well the last two or three fish have been a little better fish probably about 14 inches the last one I caught but I've been catching a lot of 11 to 12 inch rainbows Missed a lot of fish. Missed a big brown here a minute ago. I threw her out and I saw him. He went after the scud before it even hit the water or before it hit the bottom. Oh, a little one. Yeah, he's about seven, eight, seven or eight inches long. Got a couple of them. They ran water today f for an hour from 10 to 11 o'clock. Ran supposed to ran two units. It ran pretty good at the resort, so they might have ran two. Well, I turned around and my float's gone. A little better fish. I've got my DO meter up here and I just took uh, water temp and dissolved oxygen content reading and uh, we're at 57 degrees with the water being off which I'm sure it warmed up some today pretty warm today nice rainbow but he ate my scud don't think I'm gonna be able to yeah he's Cut the line and tie another one on. Not worth retrieving. I just happened to have another mink scud. I believe. Maybe. Yeah, there's a used one. He's lost about half his fur. Not many boats out today.
Ooh, there's a nice rainbow cruising. They cruise around up here a lot. They don't stay in one place. Losing my chop. We'll see if it makes a difference. <clears throat> Usually I let that scud drop to the bottom and then I make it swim just a little bit. Just twitch it, let it sit. <sighs> twitch it, let it sit. Those scuds are swimmers. They can get up off the bottom and swim around just like I'm doing with the fly. Especially when the water, when there's no chop on the water, I want to move it some. It's not that they won't swim by and pick it up just dead on the bottom, they will. But if they're swimming close to it and they don't see it on the bottom, they will see it if I hop it off the bottom and make it swim a little bit. Sometimes it triggers a bite. Sometimes it spooks them. Ah, uh, what I say? Water temps five point fifty seven. Ooh, there's fish. 5.7, 57 degrees, and the DO registered anywhere from 8.7 to 7.9. That's really, really good. And the fish are fighting good. They're very active, so I don't doubt that, that reading. Of course, wind and sun does put oxygen back in the water. And it's been sunny all day. I think I just missed another one. It's hard sometimes to, to tell if you got a bite or not. You know, a lot of my bites, the float just takes off, so it's it's easy. But sometimes it uh, sometimes it just dips or it vibrates or it does something just a little funny. I go ahead and set the hook. Just like that. As soon as I moved it, that float just, it was bobbing in the, in the water with the waves and it stopped bobbing. Sometimes the bite is that subtle. Another good rainbow. And look how hard he's biting. That oxygen was down at five or four, fish had just come in, they wouldn't even fight. Sun's just right for you to see that fish. It's good. Hold still, please. Oh, I know you're going to do that. There we go. Bit my hook just a little bit. Just bend it back. It's fine. My float is actually slid down just a little bit. Oh, 
slide it back up. And I got blown a little bit deeper water than I want, so I'm going to move back up into shallow water. I've got a real small, hard, foam, round indicator with a just a toothpick to hold it in place. It's a little bit too small. I think I was getting another bite. Need one a little bigger because this one gets pulled under just a little bit too easy. But it's okay. I was actually fishing real skinny water back behind me when I first came out and I put on this real small float so that when I cast it up there in that six inches of water that it wouldn't spook the fish. Oop. Float took off on that one. Check my hook again. I'm kind of stuck. Drifted in a little shallower water than I should have. There are some bigger fish out here. Yeah. Hoping to luck into one.
That's two in a row. As a general rule, you on a scud, I fish it one and a half times the water depth. If it's three foot deep, I'll fish it four and a half feet deep. I don't want to fish it short. I want to fish it and make sure it's on the bottom. A little better fish. I don't need all this line. Out. I probably worked about three, about 400 yards of water here. And the closer to the narrows that I've gotten, the better fishing is. Saw quite a few fish up there, but they were a little spooky. Maybe a little more mature, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with the oxygen in this lake. Saw one rise just right up here in pretty shallow water. Ooh, just saw a nice oop. He's come after my float. Just saw another nice one. Um, 
turn on its side out here. Up. Oh, I want to recast. And I probably have him in the tail. Yep. Oh, no, I don't. Got him in the mouth. I went to recast, and he was there. Sometimes, if you can get him in the tail and do that, he's a nice one. Got him in the tongue. There we go. I am right at the top of the narrows right here. Out here it's super shallow and it drops off back down in here. Oh, just another one. Yeah, they are really feeding. I can see fish moving. I can see mouths opening out there. I got a I'm kind of blown up in the shallow flat. I got to move. Let's throw out here in this real shallow water. See if I can get one to take my scud. Ooh, there's one out there. See him? Ooh, that might have been. If he turns my way, I got him. Oh, no, he went the other way. Let's see if he comes up again. He's a long way off right now. That was a good fish. I'm gonna have to move. I'm out a little bit deeper water now. Pretty much in the middle of the lake. Probably fishing five foot, five foot of water. So I've got my indicator about eight feet from the fly. It's a weighted scud, so it takes a little while for it to get down, but it does get down pretty quick. Yeah, I just had a bite. They could hit it on the way down. Just depends on how aggressive they are.
This is where I really need a bigger float. Because this little float, just the weight of the fly and the line's pulling it under once it gets down to the bottom, I think. Thought vibrate. That's a little better rainbow. Probably the biggest one I've caught so far. Got him in the corner of the mouth. I take that back. It's just around his job. No, it is in the corner of his mouth. As I moved up the lake, I came out of that deep water, so I'm in probably three feet of water now. So really, you know, when you're when you're fishing the scud or any any fly for that matter, you got to pay attention to the depth of the water. And you have to pay attention to how deep your fly is. And you're constantly adjusting. Because if you're not adjusting, you're not catching fish. And I really need to change my float out. It's too small. About got me again, looking down at my troll motor. It's a small one, I can get him. Not a little one. I think I'm gonna put the fly rod down and pick up my spin rod. Got a jig on it. I'm gonna do one cast while I'm up here. I'm not gonna do it with the fly rod. It's just not going to. With this wind, I can throw with the wind and work the jig, so I think I'll be okay. So Hope, uh, hope my instruction helps again. Um, hope you catch more fish up here. It's been good. Thanks. <laughs>